Hello. Sandy Tan, Sandy Tan, you are the uh, writer director of the documentary film Shirkers, mm -hmm. uh, which is on Netflix. Everybody can watch it right now. Uh, it is uh, about a film you made uh, uh, several years ago called Shirkers. Uh, when did it occur to you that this is a story that would make an interesting movie? Um, when? I guess about maybe three years ago when I um, began, when I got the boxes of the footage back and um, and realized that, um, and I actually got them kind of, I guess, processed, um, digitized, um, and, and watched some of it. And, and my jaw, jaw just dropped because they were, you know, they were kind of startling images. And I thought that the story behind how these images came to be and how they came to be lost and, you know, how my misspent youth would make a more interesting story than just putting this, you know, this, 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 this footage together again as a, as a film. I don't know how much you're gonna preface this by telling people what the film is about and how much I should say in way of spoilers, but basically it was a few years ago and, and um, yeah. Oh, you can go, you can go into uh, a little bit if you want uh, about, about what the film is about. We'll have that in the article as well. Oh, no, 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 then I, then I won't, I won't. I just don't wanna get too boring and spoilerish. Rather talk about more interesting things than that. <laughs> Well, I, I mean, it is really fascinating that you chose to make a documentary about about the making of this movie and this per this person, uh, uh, George, who you uh, made the film with, uh, who directed the film. You wrote the film, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, and I played and the lead as well as I played this. Um, I guess a poker face teenage um, assassin named S. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and and. And it's just sort of interesting to see how instead of, you know, piecing the footage back together to try to, you know, make this film and release it, you wanted to talk about the circumstances that were surrounding it and your friendships. Um, I mean... And my whole growth as a person and as a filmmaker as well. Like, so it, it, it starts before I get into the whole Shirkers world. And then it tells the story of me afterwards as well. Um, so it's... Uh, you know, it's, it tracks um, not just my life, but the lives of my friends as well over 25 years. So that I think is slightly more interesting than just putting together this film that may be a quirky little oddity um, that might be a, you know, a whimsical little treasure maybe, but um, but this might be, um, I, I just thought it was a more compelling thing and more universal thing and a thing that might appeal to more than just, you know, a handful of people who, you know, thought the images looked cool. And uh, actually, that, uh, talking about your friends, uh, I, uh, that actually was going to lead into my next question, specifically about uh, your two friends uh, from the movie. Uh, was it diff uh, It was Jasmine and uh, what was the, uh, the so other girl's name? Sophie. That's right, Sophie. Um, uh, was it was it difficult to get your friends to participate in this? Um, yeah, I think yeah because it was a very toxic, um, this whole thing was a very, very toxic thing for us. It, you know, the, the loss of Shirkers, whatever happened um, when we were teenagers, just kind of cracked us, um, you know, broke us up as a group. And it just did things to our friendships and our souls. Um, it was a hugely traumatic incident. Um, and, you know, um, it, when when I showed this film at Sundance this um, last year, I guess a year ago now, um, that was the first time the three of us had been in the same room together in twenty years. I mean, that's how kind of um, I mean we weren't like you know unfriendly. It's just that we were kind of we just split apart and led very different lives. But yet, whenever we talk about shirkers, it's as if we're teenagers again, as if we're co you know continuing a conversation that happened last week. And we're just back to our teenage selves. Like, for better or worse, we are those people. We were those people, and we are those people still. And we talk and 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 interact as if we were teenagers too. And I, I just wanted to kind of capture that aspect of of um, a friendship. What happens to friendships when something traumatic, really traumatic, like the the loss of Shirkas, does to to a group of friends? And um, it was very very important to me to, to kind of make sure that I captured that, you know, the feel and the tenure of that, the, the, just the tenure of that, that kind of friendship. 
it's it's actually interesting when you see um, uh, 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 the other two in uh, in addition to yourself, though. Uh, you uh, all three of you have pursued careers in film or things related to film. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, in uh, I mean, you were a film critic, and uh, another the other one is. Uh, 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 the chairman of the film department at a university. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's it's really interesting how you guys stay, how you guys sort of stayed with that course still. Um, but the other thing that I'm wondering about with uh, doing this with your friends is that you do hear some really harsh things being said <laughs> about yourself. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen that in a documentary before, where they literally say to the, where they literally lambast the person. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, was that? difficult to take in or had you like prepared yourself for that kind of um it was the way we talk uh, i mean that's that's like the nice stuff <laughs> i mean it's it's just you know it's just the way friends from a long time ago i mean that's the way you talk and i thought it was very important for me to capture that reality if you're making a documentary it shouldn't be airbrushed it shouldn't be you know the fake version of of what it is of reality and it was so important to me that um you know, so I, I had um, Iris Ng, who also shot stories we tell, and she's a very tiny DP. Um, and she shot this film for us, and I had, and she, I chose her because she can make herself invisible. And um, she's this tiny little Asian uh, Chinese Canadian woman, and um, with a large camera, and she vanishes behind that camera, and so people feel completely at ease. And Sophie and I, and Jasmine and I, when we talked, we talk as if she wasn't there. And you know they were immediately comfortable just talking to me, and it was just a natural kind of capturing slice of life, um, creatures in the native habitat. It was that kind of thing. I just had to capture what it, what to show. Like this is what trauma does to friendships over time, and this is how you can get over it, and this is how people talk, and this is how people behave, and this is how your lives, you know, have been changed by something like that. And what was their reaction? I, I, I find it very interesting that you said that they actually that you were all in the same room when you uh, when the movie premiered. What was their reaction to it? Um, they were happy. I think. I mean, I think they're they're really proud and really, um, you know, that the, I think they feel like they have a have have been given a chunk of their lives. But I hate it's really awkward for me to speak on their behalf. But it feels like you know, like especially Sophie, who's just like is was just crying at the premiere, just like excited and crying and just trying to process everything. And Jasmine too, in a different, very different way, is you know was processing everything. And the the very very different kinds of people. Jasmine tends to be to run a little hot, and and Sophie runs well. Sophie runs warm and, and Jasmine's runs something else, but but it's they're running on, on different kinds of fumes and different kinds of fuel. Um and 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 with me, the three of us are very, very different and we, we react to things in a very different way. And um I just wanted to capture what it, it felt like to be longtime friends and, and how long times friends talk to each other and, and especially women friends, you know, you never see, I mean, we're not like dancing around some hotel room, um, singing songs, you know, like this is not what life is, you know, and I just wanted to capture what it feels like to be friends with people that you've been friends with for 25 years and having gone through something horrible, you know, together. And it's like, I don't know, it's, it's like having gone through war together, it changes you, you know? Um, but um, we're, we all deal with it differently. And I think we're, we're tighter than ever. I think it's, it's it, I don't know, it's, it's, it's like something, it's like kind of a strange sort of closure, I guess, you know? And the other interesting uh, uh, interview subject in the movie uh, is uh, uh, George's ex-wife uh, who, um, uh, for whatever her reasons were, didn't want to be uh, uh, shown or named, but it was still, it's still, it, it, it struck me as a little odd that she was still, even though she was, didn't want that there, she was still willing to participate. Uh, uh, it was very difficult. Uh, convincing. Yeah, how, people. yeah, that's what I was wondering. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like a magician giving away their secrets, I guess, of, of just working really, Hard. I mean, like on some level, I think she wanted to tell her story. You know, she wanted to be known. She wanted, she didn't want to be known, known, but she wanted herself to, you know, her to justify how she could have been with this person for 25 years. It's almost like 
she's explaining it to me she's explaining it to herself she's explaining it to everybody in some sense you know like um and putting us all together in this documentary i thought was very important to give us all context you know that we weren't dumb people who were duped by this con man it wasn't like that it was um we were all intelligent thinking people you know um and 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 the other characters as well that you haven't mentioned yet um you know george's protege steve tyler as well as george's confidant you know um grace dane who's a you know professor uh, and um you know we're all different people who are and they were grown-ups when they were entangled with George and his schemes and his, you know, and were friends with him. It wasn't like, you know, I wanted to show that it wasn't just me and my friends who are like these naive teenagers who kind of like were lambs, you know, passive and taken advantage of. It wasn't like that. And it's life is so much messier than that. We were very intelligent kids. We knew, I mean, I knew what I was getting into in some level, on some level, but I just could not have predicted what I was really getting into in the fact that somebody would abscond with all that footage. I mean, that's anomalous, you know, and what he did with the other people was also anomalous. Um, so I, I wanted to show that we, you know, we weren't, we just put all in context, I guess. So to uh, sort of go into a different direction mm -hmm. uh, with this. Um, so uh, of course this uh, uh, movie, uh, the original Shirkers was made in Singapore yeah. And I don't think there's that much yeah, um, uh, known about the film industry in Singapore. Um, I mean, it, 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 Singapore did get this weird bit of attention with uh, Crazy Rich Asians earlier this year. But uh, how has uh, the film industry in, of Singapore progressed since you made that movie? Um, I am not an expert on that place. I haven't lived there in decades, so I wouldn't mm -hmm. feel like... It was right for me to comment on the film on the state of the film industry. I mean, films have been made since then. You know, um, Shirkers certainly would have been the front runner. I mean, like a a for not a forerunner. That would be a wrong word. Um, but some early, early strange. Um, I don't know attempt at making a film, or I mean, if would have been a strange film or film from there, independent film, early maybe the first. <laughs> I mean, everything's contestable because it's such a murky area. So I'm not going to go into those kinds of things, but, um, mm -hmm. it, you know, like suddenly there's, there is a minuscule film industry there and, you know, often films that, you know, go to festivals and do pretty well. And there was a film that went to Locarno last year and that won the, the main prize at Locarno, um, that a friend of mine edited. It. Um, so there the, are all these interesting things. And a friend of mine's got a film come going to Berlin this year, you know, from Singapore. And it's just, um, it's, 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 it's a small, um, there's a, I, I think there's a commercial sector of films that you never quite hear about outside of Singapore. And then there's a small trickling of interesting small films that actually win prizes at festivals and then make their way outside of Singapore. So that's, you know, a, a kind of a schizoid, um, you know, film industry, I suppose. Uh, which is true of many, many small countries, I think, you know, so it, that's what it is. And uh, so uh, the other thing that I wanted to ask you about is so uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, you, uh, you got a big piece of news with uh, the uh, the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences shortlisted Shirkers as one of the films that will advance uh, possibly to an Oscar nomination in a couple of weeks. Uh, what was your reaction when you found out that this thing that you had made about this insane experience from, you know, 25 years ago uh, had been shortlisted? Well, the entire ride has been really insane. So nothing would surprise me either way. But I mean, it's it's like you're prepared for everything. And maybe I'm because I'm a pessimist and also a crazy optimist. Um, you know, it's it's all it's all just it's it's been a great ride you know like showing this film at sundance where they gave me the um directing prize that was already a wonderful thing and that was like that's great if that was all it you know happened um that was that was good enough but you know taking the film around the world and on this on the entire circuit in the last year and then having it debut on uh premiere on on, on netflix which was a game changer because i'm hearing from you know people from around the world who send me like fan art and text messages in Spanish with like tear crying face emojis. I mean, that's just like 
to me, that is why I made this film. You know what I mean? The award stuff, it's great. It's wonderful because it's going to get more eyes on it and this kind of story and encourage more kids to be reckless and 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 dream recklessly and try to pursue their dreams. Um, but you know, um, really, it's 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 about getting the film shown to as many you know kids of all ages as possible. So being on Netflix has been amazing. Um, of course, it was made for the big screen. Uh, so being shown on select in select theaters has been great too. Well, uh, well, I, I can't thank you enough for joining us for this. Uh, we wish you all the best uh, for this award season. Uh, fingers crossed. Yep. And uh, again, uh, you can see this movie right now on Netflix. So if you haven't seen this movie, please go watch it. Thank you. <laughs> Take care. Okay, bye.